Z390 is finally amongst us and the CPU details are still out there in the wild, so we'll have to wait on those. But in particular, in this review, I can't talk about any of those CPU details as just yet. But I can say one thing, and that is I did test out a particular CPU that puts out a lot of heat to stress this VRM for this review. And so what we've got here is the Z390 Taiji Ultimate from ASRock, which is essentially a step up from the Z370 i7 Professional Gaming Series. Even though it features a similar set, they've gone with the Taichi Ultimate to implement that 10 gigabit NIC, for example, as well as adding two additional USB ports on the back and then beefing things up on the motherboard. For instance, they're giving you eight PWM fan controller outs as well as an additional four pin power feed for the CPU. But on that note of VRMs and everything else with this motherboard, let's go in depth and take a look for you guys. Welcome back to Tech yes City, and here we have the Z390 Taichi Ultimate, which is ASRock's flagship board for this chipset in particular. Previously, it was the professionals, I said in the intro, Z370 Gaming i7 Professional motherboard. They are pretty similar in terms of their 12-phase VRM designs, feature 12K capacitors from Nichicon, 60 amp chokes, as well as Texas Instruments Nex FETs. These are FETs that are true and tried in the industry, and they did a phenomenal job of keeping a particular CPU under wraps, when it came to overclocking, when it wasn't overclocked, we're looking at about 79 degrees on that motherboard and then 44 degrees on the heatsink. The heatsink they are using weighs in at about 250 grams. But I will say one thing with this VRM, it did handle the particular CPU absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about, even with no VRM cooling. But uh, in terms of efficiency, the Maximus Hero 6 did do an ever so slight edge in getting better efficiency numbers. So maybe ASRock will want to think about in the next implementations of their motherboards, moving over to Vichy Silicon X uh, MOSFETs. Moving over to memory overclocks, this is 3200 MHz XMP profiles, managed to overclock it manually to 3700 MHz, same as the Maximus Hero. So the memory overclocks, at least in my experience with this motherboard, aren't gonna be limited by the motherboard itself, more so your memory. Moving down the motherboard, we've got three NVMe solutions here. The bottom one featuring a heatsink, and this heatsink does work, and it works pretty well, dropping temperatures over 20 degrees. So when we had the heatsink on, we saw 72 degrees in the software itself, doing a 100 gigabyte file transfer, 58 degrees on the heatsink. Then with the heatsink off, 94 degrees on the PCB, and then 97 degrees with it off. Keep in mind, I am doing my readings at particular points in the test, and then I'm comparing it apples to apples in that same particular test. So in other motherboard reviews, you may see the results differ a little bit, but moving through PCI solutions, they've got still reinforced slots on the 16X slots, even though one of them is only a true 16X slot. The one below that is 8X, and then the one below that 4X. So if you are getting two RTX 2080 Ti's, then you may wish to step it up to the X299 or go with AMD solutions for their motherboards because you will be limited to two 8X slots. When it comes to putting those motherboards in NVLink, which I haven't tested yet, but it may be a uh, cause for concern. Since the 8-speed slot may just limit the RTX 2080 Ti, I haven't tested it yet, so I can't confirm. But moving through other features, we've got power and reset buttons, as well as a Dr. Debug LED readout. You've got front USB Type-C out, as well as front USB 3 out, and eight SATA ports on board. So a lot of connectivity, as well as, as we mentioned before, eight PWM fan controllers that can be controlled via software. There's also RGB lighting at the top left heatsink and also the bottom right Taichi Ultimate heatsink that can be controlled via the Polychrome RGB sync software, as well as having an additional four pin and three pin outs for connecting different devices and controlling it via the motherboard itself. And now looking at ASRock's onboard audio solution, they call it the Purity Sound 4. It is phenomenal for an onboard audio solution. Below seven hertz, we saw a drop off there uh, just like the upcoming ASUS review, you'll see that the onboard audio solutions are phenomenal. And we saw like literally uh, maximum was like a two decibel drop off below seven hertz. After that, we saw the frequency response curve being pretty much perfectly flat the whole way through those frequencies that your ears will definitely need for a nice natural sound. Under 80 decibels of crosstalk, however, after a volume level of 90, there is a little bit of audio leaking over from the left channel to the right channel. So if you are using the Realtek 1220 onboard audio solution for headphones or speakers via analog output, then in my opinion, you will want to keep that volume level at 90 or below. The balance of the left and right channels compared to each other was within 0.1 decibel spec, which is phenomenal again. And looking at the onboard mic in or the ADC, 
we've got here 192 kilohertz 24 bit as well as on that note the audio out supports up to 192 kilohertz 32 bit depth so you've got a lot of playroom there uh, though with the mic in itself we've got 100 level plus 30 db and there is noise suppression this is visible when we were doing a forks recording just from the mic in line itself via no microphone you can see that it's perfectly flat though when you do change sometimes you can identify a little boost while it's changing the decibel levels that's essentially the noise suppression kicking in heavier the more you raise the volume so for professional recordings with this uh, onboard audio you'd only want to use the line in but the mic in will be fine for talking to your mates playing games and keeping things noise free also one notable thing with the audio out is the volume levels have been raised especially when i compared it to that of the z370 also covering some last minute things with this motherboard, you've got dual band AC wireless with an included antenna, which is an external device. Me personally, I do prefer the antennas. I think they're more mobile and less clutter on your desk. But of course the module is seems to be a way where the higher end flagship boards are going. And looking at the back of the board, I must say you've got a lot of different connectivity here. Eight USB ports, one of those are 3.1, one of those are type C, as well as six of those being 3.0, display port and HDMI outs, as well as two one gigabit per second NICs, one of those being a 219V and the other being a 211AT. And then you've got an Equatia 10 gigabit NIC, which in speed tests did a phenomenal job. And also on that note, testing the USB 3 speeds, they showed no slowdowns whatsoever. You've also got a clear CMOS button and a manual 5.1 analog out for your surround sound or an optical out. And I love those optical outs, especially if you're using something like the Z906 surround sound, which I'm using and I absolutely love it. And I do rely on those optical outs. So please never get rid of them. And touching on the UEFI BIOS, you've got simple and advanced mode. Of course, I'm so used to advanced mode. Going through the features here has everything I'd want, especially for air and water overclockers. Nothing has really changed up here compared to previous generations of ASRock motherboards, at least specifically the uh, Z370 or the Z200 series. It has all the features I'm looking for when it comes to overclocking CPU control, as well as voltage, cache ratios, DDR4, RAM speeds, as well as having presets there too. Uh, but one thing I will point out is maybe it could use an aesthetic boost. I think the competitors are starting to update their biases. I would like to see a little bit of a fresh update. Uh, but one thing I didn't find the polychrome RGB software control in this particular bias. But keep in mind, this is a pre-release sample, uh, though there is the option to automatically update it if you've got an internet connection coming in via your router. You can also save overclocking profiles individually and control each of the PWM fan headers automatically or manually. And now we're at conclusion time with the Z390 Taichi Ultimate. And as always, ASRock do a phenomenal job, I guess, of bringing value into flagship. This does come in cheaper than the competitor's options, or at least with the Ultimate, since you're getting the 10 gigabit NIC, it comes in around the same as the competitor's solutions, which are their flagship motherboards. Uh, if you take away the Ultimate and just get the Taichi, then you do save quite a bit of money. And it is my recommendation to go with the normal Z390 Taichi that should be released with the same specs minus one of those 10 gigabit NICs. And so I've recommended this in the past, just grab yourself a 10 gigabit NIC if you need it, and then uh, port that over to build to build. Since you do get that four speed PCIe slot down the bottom, which let's face it, no one's gonna be going with three-way SLI in 2018 or 2019, unless you're going for crazy overclock battles. But even then, they're only using two cards. But currently the Z370 Taichi in Australia comes in around 280 Aussie in America. It's a lot cheaper as well. So it's coming into a great price point. The Ultimate, as I said before, does add around about 70 to 100 Aussie dollars. I don't have official pricing just yet. I will update the description below. But basically for a flagship board, it definitely ticks all the boxes I would want. And you would want to go with the Taichi Ultimate if you see yourself using this for say the next five years and you do utilize 10 gigabits per second solutions for the NIC itself. So you do have that on board. You won't have to worry about getting any add-in cards. So that is the option ASRock are offering. And it is a solid board through and through from anything from the VRM to the overclocking to the BIOS features and to the onboard audio. But more importantly, it can handle CPUs that do put out a lot of heat with overclocks that are very high. I have confirmed with a colleague of mine who lives up in Brisbane about these overclockings and this board specifically. And he was able to get much better numbers than I was through high-end custom overclocking water cooling. And he said that the VRM on this particular board as well handled the uh, particular CPU that puts out a lot of heat absolutely fine. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Stay tuned, I will have the Maximus Hero 6 coming out as well. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about Z390 and more specifically the Z390 Taichi Ultimate. 
Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you on the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.